People often confuse C++ with C, probably because C++ initially started out as C with classes, and it's sort of almost like a superset of C, but not quite. And a lot of job postings say that they need someone who knows C slash C++, as if the two aren't completely different languages. Furthermore, a common question I see on internet forums is about whether you should learn C before learning C++, as if it's a prerequisite or something. But the answer is a resounding no. Idiomatic C looks very, very different from idiomatic C++. They're different languages. And one of the first things that the C++ community tries to hammer down into beginners' minds is that you shouldn't write C++ like C. Don't use C-style strings, use standard string. Don't use C-style arrays, use standard array or standard vector. Don't use enum, use enum class. Don't use union, use standard variant. There's a whole list of things that you need to remember on what not to do. But the key takeaway is don't ever, ever, ever write C++ like it's C. Unless you're writing C-style C++ then it's okay. You see, some people really like the simplicity of C, and they hate the complexity and feature bloat of C++. So they write a style of C++ that's basically C with just a few C++ features. This is known as C-style C++. And that's the problem with C++. Every single thing that you learn has some sort of surprising edge case which turns out to be super important. You're taught to never write C++ like C. Unless you're working on a C-style C++ code base, then you have to. You're taught to use static cast whenever you can, but then you learn that you shouldn't do this for enums. Use standard to underlying instead. You're taught that returning a pointer to a local variable is dangerous because the memory is deallocated when the function returns. But then it turns out that this doesn't apply to string literals because they have static storage duration and exist for the entire lifetime of the program. You're taught to use standard move whenever you can to efficiently transfer large resources, but then you learn that you should never use it when returning a value from a function because C++ has an optimization trick called return value optimization. And when you do this, it screws it up. You're taught that private member variables in a class are inaccessible from the outside, but then you learn about the friend keyword that lets you bypass that. You're taught to use const references everywhere for performance reasons, but then you learn that it's actually faster to copy small objects than to pass them by reference. So actually don't pass by const reference if the object is small. Oh, and by the way, you probably don't want to have const reference member variables, because then you open up a whole can of worms with your object's copy and move semantics. So you have to figure out whether you should use a standard reference wrapper or a pointer or a GSL not null or a custom wrapper of your own or something else. The number of edge cases in the language is unfathomable. I've barely even scratched the surface. If you want to learn them all, you can start by reading the spec for C++20. It's nearly 2,000 pages long. And if you have any follow-up questions, make sure to visit CPP Reference. At some point, you'll realize that this is not documentation. It's a cry for help. And since we're on the topic of crying, let's take a look at how to actually build your application.